Welcome to the broadcast. Our sign language interpreter tonight is Damien Evans. Tonight, the country has witnessed an unprecedented move. The national government has taken over the running of the county of Nairobi. In a landmark agreement between the national government and embattled Governor Mike Sonko, the national government has stripped the county government of four key functions. County health services, transport, public works, planning and development will now be run by the national government. KTN senior reporter Rita Tinina leads our coverage tonight. Out of the blue, all long overdue, a move that was perhaps not anticipated. Venue, State House. Pen on paper, on an agreement, the first of its kind since devolved governments came into effect. Embattled Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko has been stripped of the functions of the county. Sonko and Devolution Cabinet Secretary Eugene Wamalwa signed an agreement handing over the functions of the Nairobi government to the national government in a ceremony witnessed by President Uhuru Kenyatta, Speaker of the Senate Kenneth Lusaka and Attorney General Paul Kihara. The national government will now be in charge of the county health services, county transport services, county public works, utilities and ancillary services, and county government planning and development. The move is passed on to Article 187 of the Constitution. According to the Constitution, a function or power of government at one level may be transferred to a government at the other level by an agreement between the governments if the functional power would be more effectively performed or exercised by the receiving government. And the transfer of the functional power is not prohibited by the legislation under which it is to be performed or exercised. In a statement, State House spokesperson Kanze Dena Mararo says this will ensure Nairobi residents receive services efficiently. The move comes as a breakthrough in the running of the county services that has ground to a halt, says the statement. Mike Sonko, who is facing corruption charges, was barred from setting foot at the Nairobi County headquarters. County 047 has been running without a deputy governor since January 2018. This comes in the back of proposals in the BBI to have Nairobi County cease being a county and run as a capital city by the national government. And for Sonko to smoothly surrender some functions, the governor, facing a court case and impeachment, may have been cornered and the heat may have been too much to handle. Debate is already rife on whether the move is legally sound and just how it will be operationalized. Rita Tinina, KTN News. All right, let's now bring in constitutional lawyer Peter Wanyamo to just try and put uh, perspective on this issue that Nairobians will be keen to hear what will be happening on a day-to-day -day basis in the county number 047. Thank you, Wanaokili, for joining us. Is this in order and in line with the Kenyan constitution, what has happened? Mm. Yeah, let me just clarify in terms of the, of, 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 of the transfer functions. Eh? The idea to transfer function uh, from the national government, uh, from the from the county government to the national government, is an idea which is justified by the constitution. However, in terms of the mechanics, in terms of the process, in my view, the attorney general has not advised the president properly, and uh, there's a major, major legal pitfall regarding the process of uh, leading to the signing of the of the agreement today. Right. In my view, there there is a six uh, a six. A uh, step process, a very, very important process, which cannot be sidestepped. Uh, and uh, sidestepping any of these uh, processes makes the entire process, in my view, uh, unprocedurally and, right. of course, illegal. Questions have been asked about uh, the non involvement of the County Assembly of Nairobi in this, the, National, the County Executive Committee, as well as uh, public participation. Is this, does this make this process a bit shaky? Yeah, actually, in terms of the process, uh, the process of transfer is also guided by legislation. It is guided by the provisions of the Intergovernmental Relations uh, Act of 2012, not the Constitution alone, which provides specific details on the things which are supposed to be done by the county executive, by the national uh, government, the county executive at the county level, and also the county uh, approved by the county assembly. The first process entails generating the idea. All right. The idea is generated, discussed by the county executive uh, uh, committee, and then taken to the county assembly for approval. And I believe this is a stage where then you involve the public in terms of public participation. Uh, 
you generate a draft agreement, then you, 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 you subject it to a meaningful and qualitative public participation where the public agree, uh, approves. And if you look at the provisions of the County Government Act again, this is an idea which uh, ideally should be subjected to a county-specific referendum organized by the county government because it's a very, very massive and it's a very, very heavy idea. After that has been done, then it, in terms of the next uh, steps, if yes. you look at the functions of the Council of County Governors, it must be discussed at the Council of County Governors. Then the next step is for it to be discussed by the national government and the county government coordinating summit, which is chaired by the president. If, in fact, one of the functions of, of the summit is to discuss how such a transfer is supposed to be made. And then after that, uh, it, the, the draft agreement is, gen, is, is then prepared. When the draft agreement has been prepared, the agreement then con, must contain the specific requirements of legislation. If you look at Section 28 of the, of the Intergovernmental Rela uh, 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 Relations Act, it contains specific issues which must go into the agreement, including timelines, eh? right. so, so that it, it is not something which can be done uh, forever. It's not something which can be done haphazardly. After this section 28 of the county of, 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 the, of the act has been, has been met, the agreement must be signed. In this case, it must be signed, the law calls that person an authorized officer. Now, if you look at the meaning of an authorized officer, this is the chief officer of that department where the function has been transferred. So the governor, even though he's the governor of the county government, he has no legal authority to sign uh, a, 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 an agreement transferring functions to the national government. He has no legal authority, even though he will, of course, superintend. Then after that has been done, it must be gazetted. It must be gazetted in the National Gazette and the County Gazette 14 days before it takes effect. To me, that is the process which must be followed in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the transfer of functions right. and which has not been done in this case. In your view, why has this been done so haphazardly? Is, has it been complicated by the impeachment motion against the Nairobi governor? Yeah, I think whatever problems which uh, Governor Sonko faces, eh, and of course he, he, he will have his time in court to, to defend himself, eh, he can't rush such a massive uh, decision through the process without following the law. So it may be done out of political convenience, but at the end of the day it must meet the legal test. Today, at the signing of this agreement in State House Nairobi, yeah, yeah. the Attorney General, Paul Kihara, was there. What would you say about the government's legal advice on this very momentous exercise? I, I believe that they, 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 personally, after, after looking at the constitution and law and interpreting it, uh, 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 because it makes, it makes a lot of uh, uh, provisions on the subject, I believe the Attorney General has misguided the President, the Attorney General has misguided the Cabinet Secretary for devolution, and also misadvised the, the, the County Governor. They have no such, uh, even though they have powers to sign such an agreement, they really can't rush it in that manner without f following the process which is put in legislation. And, uh, and, 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 and to me, if, if you interpret it broadly, if right. you interpret the Constitution broadly and the functions of the Senate in terms of protecting devolution, such an agreement must be approved by the Senate as well. Ap apart from approval by the County Assembly, it must be approved by the Senate. So I don't see how they can sidestep the County Assembly. Right. Remember, the County Government is not Governor Sonko. It is the County Executive and the County Assembly. So they must be involved because what happens then to the County Assembly if you are transferring core functions of the National Government, of the County Government to the National Government? What happens to them? It means right. they have no work to do. They must they, they, they must then sign off and go home. It's what happens to the CECs who are responsible for these dockets? Eh? So in my view, all, uh, all, uh, these are the issues which, which uh, gives, uh, uh, gives me the, 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 the strength to say in terms of perspective that the Attorney General has really uh, misled us. What will be the, county, the Council of Governors be thinking? Uh, I, I can't speak for the Council of Governors. Uh, they, 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 they will definitely get legal advice on, on, on this issue. Right. But they have a role. If you look at uh, the functions of the Council of Governors in the, in, the, in, the, in the law, they have a role in terms of matters which concerns uh, county governments. Like this one, really, they must discuss. Then they must discuss, discuss it with the president and see right. what are the capacity limitations of the county government of Nairobi. Why is it that they want to transfer this function? Is it out of political convenience or is it because really they can't run right. this function? Finally, uh, there's a school of thought that this will set up bad precedents for governors, especially future Nairobi governors. What is your take on this? Yeah, of course, as I said, it is politically convenient to transfer these functions to, uh, because of the centrality of Nairobi uh, in, in terms of being a capital city. But it is bad for devolution. It is bad, as you say, for president. And uh, to me, uh, it is something which the Senate should intervene urgently and end so that uh, we don't set a, uh, such a bad president in the administration of devolution in this country. All right. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Always a pleasure having you in studio. Asante. Peter Onyama, constitutional lawyer.
pointing out some of the issues that, and questions that will be, be, sick, be sought in this debate and of course what Nairobians want to know, that will, what will be happening on a day-to-day -day basis concerning this unprecedented move uh, 